here's how to create this 3D animation, including this 3D airplane just using After Effects. Let's jump on in. First of all, let's create a new composition. 1080p is good enough for me. Let's hit OK. And the first step here is to set up our scene. Let's drop in whatever map graphic that you're using. In my case, I got this one from Invato. Although I'm not a big fan of this color, what I'm gonna do is add a fill effect to this layer and then change the color. And by the way, I'm using this free plugin called FX Console. So that way you can quickly add effects. But don't worry, if you don't have it installed, you can go to the effects panel, search for the effect that you wanna apply and double click to apply it to your layer. Next, we need the curve line to show our travel route. So let's grab the pen tool from the toolbar above. Then I'll go down here to enable grid. So that way I can use it as a guide to draw the perfect curve. And there we go. Down in the timeline, I'll select the shape layer and press enter and rename it to travel line. Then let's expand the layer and under stroke, we can change the line color. White is totally fine for me, but I want to lower the width and also change the line cap to round cap. Now we might not even really notice this depending on the camera angle, but I just think it looks nicer when it's rounded. All right, so now we can make both of these layers 3D by ticking this box. If you don't see this box, just press F4. Now let's select the map layer and press R to open up the rotation properties. And I'm going to change the X rotation to minus 90 degrees because I want the map to be facing up as if it was on a table. So now let's go to the line layer. And if we hold Y on our keyboard, we can bring the anchor point of this layer down and move it to the bottom of this line. I can move the line up. And if I hold control or command on a Mac, as I'm moving it, it will snap to the map layer. All of this is to make sure that the travel line just sits on top of my map. If I switch this to two views on the left window here, I can hold Alt or Option on a Mac and use my mouse to change the angle. And if you look closely here, when I move my line down, it starts to clip through the map and we don't want that. Now that we know that the line is sitting on top of the map, let's switch the left view to the top angle and let's move the travel line to the desired starting point. For me, I want the start point to be somewhere in the USA and then I can rotate the layer so the ending point is in Europe, for example. If it doesn't go far enough for you, just scale up this layer, switch back to the custom view to see our setup in 3D space. Our next step is to create a 3D camera and then animate it. So let's right click in the timeline to create it. I'll leave all the settings as default and you'll see that our right window is now showing the active camera, which is our camera layer. You can see the camera in action as I move it around in the left window. When dealing with a 3D scene, it's always good to have at least two windows open here so you can use one of them to move around freely without messing up the camera's position. So basically now you can start adding keyframes to the camera layer to manipulate and animate the position and rotation. But what I like to do is create a null layer, which is just an empty layer for now. And now we can make it 3D and move it to the center where our animation is in 3D space. So that'll be in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean for me. So then we can parent our camera layer to the null layer. And let's also rename the null layer to camera aim. So the benefit of this setup is that I can rotate my new aim layer to get the camera to move up while keeping it pointed to the map itself. So now on the camera layer itself, I can move it in and out or side to side. But obviously this step will depend on how you wanna move your camera. For me, I'm just going to set some keyframes here to the rotation of my aim layer and make the camera slowly orbit above the map, but not too slow because you wanna have enough camera movement so the parallax between the layers is visible. Otherwise, there's no point in making it 3D in the first place. Now that the camera's moving, I'm gonna add something under the map so we get some more parallax action. So let's just create a new solid layer, make it 3D, and let's rotate it 90 degrees so it's laying down. I'll move it down a bit so we can create a bigger separation, which would make the parallax more visible on our main camera. Now the solid itself is kind of boring, right? So I'm going to add a grid effects on top of it to add, you guessed it, a grid. Let's make the grid a little bit smaller and also lower the border radius so it's not so thick. 
Let's also add a gradient map effect and switch it to radial ramp. I want it to be white in the middle and darker as the line goes further out. So now it looks like it's disappearing into the distance. Now, if we're going for a minimalistic design, this would be enough, but I wanna add an ocean underneath our map. And the best place to find it is in Vato, which is the sponsor of this video. Here I can change the category to stock video and search for top view of an ocean. And we have plenty to choose from here, but I'm gonna go for this one. Let's download it. And inside of After Effects, let's drop it into our composition and let's make it 3D and move it under our grid layer. Let's scale it up, and after some quick color grading, this is what we've got. And stock video is only one part of what Envato has to offer. They have assets from graphics templates to different fonts, to music, to sound effects. And they even have Gen AI tools as well. For this video, I'm also going to grab a 3D model of this airplane, because yes, Envato also has tons of pre-textured 3D models that you can use inside of After Effects. If you're a video editor, graphic designer, or a 3D artist, Envato will definitely save you time, so that way you can search just in one place for everything you need. And even if you don't want to design a 3D map like we're doing from scratch, they have tons of map templates that you can customize inside of After Effects. They even have an Envato extension, so that way you can search for your assets directly inside your app and you never have to leave it. So click the link below to try it out for yourself and thanks to Envato for sponsoring this video. And now it's time to animate. I'll start with the travel lines. To make them extend out, we have to go down to the timeline here. And under the layer, there's this little add button. Let's press it and let's pick trim paths. Under that, we can keyframe the end parameter from zero to 100 and you can see the line extending out on our map. Now it's a bit slow, so I'm going to move the keyframes closer together. What I want now is to slap an airplane in front of the line so that way the line looks like a trail coming out of the back of the plane. So we've already downloaded this plane model from Envato, so I'm going to grab the GLB file and drop it right into the preview window. Now a small window will pop up and here we can scale the model down and then hit OK. One important note is that you can only work with 3D models if you're using the advanced 3D renderer. If you're using the classic 3D, make sure to change it down here. Now that we've got our airplane, let's change the left window to top view and move and rotate the plane to the starting point. Now it's still a little bit too big, so I'm going to scale it down even more. Then let's switch to front view and let's move the plane down right on top of the map. Now we could just manually animate the plane to follow our travel line, but there's an easier way to do it. On the line layer, let's extend the properties until you find path. Let's extend that and underneath path with the stopwatch in front of it, let's click that parameter and press copy. Now on the plane layer, let's press P to open up the position properties, press it and paste our path data into it. Now we'll automatically get keyframes with our curved path. Although it doesn't follow our travel line exactly, it's a lot easier than animating from scratch. Now all we need to do is make sure that the keyframes of the plane's position are lining up with our trim path keyframes so the timing is in sync. On our front view window, line up the plane's position path to our travel line and make sure the start and end point is at the same spot. Then let's switch to the top view and let's line it up here as well. So once it lines up on both the top and the front view here, you can see in our camera's view that the plane is now following the same path. We can then select all of these keyframes and press F9 to ease the keyframes, creating a smoother animation. And don't forget to stay hydrated. All right, so back in After Effects, let's also create some location markers to add to our scene. So I'm going to hide all the layers for now. And then let's grab the pen tool to draw a line. You can draw an arrow pointing down or whatever you want. Then you can press Control or Command plus T to enable the type tool and you can write out the location's name on top. I'm going to duplicate these two layers and change the text to create a marker for my second location. Let's select the two layers and then we can pre-comp them and I'm going to name it USA. Let's do the same for the other two layers and let's name it Europe. Turn these two pre-comps into 3D layers and let's move them to the right spot in the 3D scene. Don't forget to use the front view to make sure the markers aren't clipping under our map. 
I'll also move the anchor point down to the bottom of the marker so I can keyframe the scale parameter to create a pop-up animation coming from the map. Check it out. So we've pretty much gone through all of the main steps to create our 3D animation, but here are some optional effects to bring your animation to the next level. So first I'm going to duplicate my map layer and on the bottom one, I've moved it down in 3D space and changed it to a darker color. I also added the Venetian blinds effect to the bottom map layer and changed the settings to create a bunch of horizontal lines. And on the top one here, I lowered the opacity so you can see through to the bottom layer. I like the look of this and the fact that you can see more depth in the map. So the next thing I did was create a cloud layer on top of everything. So I did this by creating a new solid and let's name it clouds. And let's also make it a 3D layer and then move it up closer to the camera in 3D space. Right now, it just looks like a solid cover covering up the camera. To make it look more like the clouds, I'm going to add the turbulent noise effect to it. And let's bump up the contrast by a lot and lower the brightness and complexity until we get smaller patches of white clouds. Now this looks good, but it's not moving. So to make it move, we can keyframe the evolution parameter or we can just use an expression. So do this by holding the Alt or Option key on a Mac and you press the stopwatch icon in front of the evolution parameter. And down in the timeline, the expression box will pop up. Now we can write in time times 20. And this will make the evolution value go up by 20 every second. I think this is enough. But to make this see through, I'm going to add a Luma key effect to key out the dark areas. Then we top it off with a Gaussian blur to smooth it out. And down on the clouds layer, let's lower the opacity so that way it's not too distracting. And here we go. For some finishing touches, of course, let's select all the layers and pre-comp them all into one. And on this pre-comp, I'll add in a bit of glow to make the brighter areas pop more. And let's finish it off with the CC lens effect. This will give the whole scene more of a curve so it looks more like a globe because you know, the world is round and all of that, right? And finally, just scale up the pre-comp to cover up all the black areas and we're done. So if you learned anything from this video, be sure to leave a comment below and also give this video a thumbs up. If you want more After Effects tutorials like this, you can check out these other videos. That's all for today's video. And as always, keep creating better video with Gal. See you next time. Bye.